Artwork is something most of us would want to preserve. Well, as a lesson in impermanence, sand mandalas are created to be destroyed. Let's visit with local sand mandala artist Katie Jo to learn more. I've been an artist for a long time, for, since I was a kid, but I discovered sand mandalas at an interfaith festival um, about six, seven years ago. This Tibetan Lama was doing a sand mandala and I had never seen anything like it. And I skipped half the conference just to watch him do it because I was totally mesmerized. I watched him for a long time and then I went home and watched YouTube videos and made my own tools worked with that for um, a couple years just teaching myself how to do it. A couple years ago some monks visited Rochester where I live and I got to work with them for a week on a mandala and get some real training. I like the idea that you don't have to keep art, that it's just about the process. Sand art is purposely impermanent. It's ephemeral. I say just like everything else in life, it doesn't last. I like it because I like that it's about the process. I like that you have to concentrate and be in the moment. Westerners especially have a hard time letting go. We like to hang on to everything and we like things to be permanent. We wish that everything could be forever. When I do impermanent art, it helps people practice to let things go that everything in life is beautiful and you try really hard at it, you put yourself into it, and then it goes away. And if you don't know how to accept that, then that loss can really eat you up. I'm a Christian pastor who loves Buddhism, um, and specifically Buddhist art. When I do sand art, it's both an inner faith experience because of the people who attend and because I'm blending um, the best of both worlds, East and West. We had over um, a thousand people come and see this mandala as I was creating it. It took 24 hours total over the course of like four days. It takes every muscle in your body. Um, you're always sore afterwards, that's just part of the, the way that it works. I kind of hunch over and bend down and you have to hold the tool just right and you have to have even your breathing be still and exact so that each grain of sand lands exactly where you want it to land. And it's the perfect marriage of, you know, complete obsessive control and total abandon, which I think is why it feels like such flow and so natural when I do it. Sand mandalas take hours and hours to create and about 15 minutes to destroy. All that hard work is gone in a couple of minutes and that's okay. I plan right from the beginning. I'm going to take every muscle of my body and work really hard on this and then I'm going to destroy it on purpose in order to teach myself and the audience to let things go. We destroyed it together in a, a ceremony that I do that's similar to the Tibetan ceremony, but much more simple um, and much more sort of appropriate for Westerners who are not versed in the deep philosophy of Buddhism, but are able to appreciate purposely letting something go. Sand art is teaching myself and meditating on the fact that you got to let go. And letting go is good. It's normal. Things change and they don't change back. And that's life. For more information, visit sandbykatiejoe.com.